ago, in the ancient land of Greece, there lived a king called Midas. He was a fair and just king and he ruled his kingdom wisely. The people were prosperous and content. Now, the king had one little daughter called Marigold, whom he loved dearly. Princess Marigold did not have a mother and she too loved her father more than anybody else in the world. One day, as King Midas was returning after doing a survey of his kingdom, he found Silenus wandering alone, close to the border. Silenus was God Dionysus' best friend. The king brought him to his palace and treated him as a royal guest. When Dionysus realized that his friend was missing, he set out to look for him. He was overjoyed to see Silenus being treated so well. I must repay your kindness to my friend, he said, thanking King Midas. I shall grant you a wish. King Midas's face lit up with excitement. A wish? He gasped. Whatever I like? Whatever you like, beamed the grateful Dionysus. Midas thought hard. Trembling with excitement, he said, Let whatever I touch turn to beautiful yellow gold. Are you sure? Dionysus was amused. Think again, you may regret it. I am prepared to take the risk, said the king firmly. Then it's done. From sunrise tomorrow morning, your slightest touch will turn everything into gold. But don't say I didn't warn you, Dionysus warned as he left with Silenus. Midas was very excited. He could barely sleep that night. He kept wondering if Dionysus' promise would come true. At the break of day, he jumped out of bed. The moment his feet touched the floor, it turned to gold. Gingerly, he touched his bed, his pillow, the couch, and like magic, everything turned into beautiful yellow gold. The king's heart began to race. He rushed out of the palace straight to his garden. He stopped to pick up a flower. And lo, he was holding a golden bloom in his hand. King Midas ran round the garden, touching everything he could see. The pebbles, the bushes, the fountain, even the fountain froze into a golden spray. The excitement was too much to handle. He soon realized that he had not had a drop of water since morning. Hurrying back into his palace, he announced, Let's have a feast to celebrate my new fortune. But what was happening? The moment he raised a glass of clear cold water to his lips, it became solid gold. The bread turned into gold. The juicy red apple became hard and shiny and yellow. The biscuit, the tea, the cake, all was gold, gold, gold. He pushed back his golden chair in dismay. I'll give everything I have turned into gold for just one sip of cool water and a bite of bread. Oh, what have I done? How foolish I've been, he ground while pacing up and down the huge dining hall. Just then, his little daughter came running into the room and before he realized it, she was in his arms. Tears streamed down his face as he felt the apple of his eye stiffen into a cold golden statue. He left his palace and his garden. Weeping bitterly, he prayed for Dionysus to appear before him. Miserable Midas threw himself at Dionysus' feet and begged him to undo the magic. Are you sure you no longer wish to have the golden touch? 
asked Dionysus. No, I have learnt my lesson. I no longer think gold is the greatest thing in the world. King Midas wept and kept on pleading with Dionysus. Finally relenting, Dionysus said, Go and have a bath in the water of the river Pactolus. You will become normal again. Then sprinkle some of that water on everything that had transformed into gold. The king rushed to the river and hurriedly had a bath. Filling a pitcher with the water from that river, he sprinkled it on Marigold first. Instantly, she returned to her normal human self and gave him a kiss. The king then went around the palace, sprinkling water on everything he had touched. Then, he and Marigold sat down for a delicious breakfast. Food had never tasted so good before.